So it's funny, one of the ways that you can see just how firm this is, is look at her paws. Look at her paws. Look how tight and firm that is. And you can see golf ball and you can see her paws and just how tight and thick this Bermuda is. It's crazy. Howdy. So, I think it's about 3.30 in the afternoon and Doc's exhausted already. <laughs> uh, we're gonna talk about how to thicken up your lawn so tight that you can't even get a finger through it. I mean, really, really tight Bermuda. That's what we're gonna talk about today. But to start off my day, man, I've been going since 5 a.m. this morning. Had a whole bunch of stuff going on. Had to take uh, Fat Jack Russell, Cassie, to the vet. She is now diagnosed with a slight heart murmur and she is diagnosed with dry eye syndrome. So she's gonna have drops every day for the rest of her life. It doesn't stop. But let me just go over real quick. Today I'm gonna tell you how this, this lawn, this is 15, 16 year old turf. When we bought this house about five years ago or so, it looked crappy. The guy just rode his riding lawnmower over it, cut it two and a half, three inches, and then I took it over and we've brought it back to health. So I'm gonna show you how I've managed to bring this back to health. I'm gonna show you something funny too. I'm gonna to show you the world's worst Bermuda lawn. Remember how beautiful that was? We took an all weed infested lawn and then we made it beautiful again. Well, guess what? Guess who's not taking care of it this year? This guy. And I'm gonna show you what one season of no care will do to a lawn. So this is a funny story. A lot of you guys know we took over what I called the world's worst Bermuda lawn. And it was pretty much solid weeds. Turned it into a perfect Bermuda lawn. Well, I guess I felt kind of underappreciated and I was like, you know what? Uh, I'm kind of done with that. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna show you after one year of not doing treatments on this lawn, what it has returned to. And this is, was beautiful Bermuda. And now I want you to look at it. So now you can see what this lawn has turned into. It has basically grown back into weeds and a crappy looking lawn. That's just after one season of no care, no treatments. Yeah, it's raining again. <laughs> a lot of people are gonna say, Doc, why'd you give up on that world's worst lawn over there? Uh, I don't mind helping people out, but if they're not gonna help themselves, if they're not gonna give a damn, I'm not gonna give a damn. That's the truth of it. Now, we had new neighbors move in across the street, and when they moved in, their lawn was the same, all weeds. So last fall, we started working with them, and guess what? Their lawn has completely turned around and is almost solid Bermuda now. It's looking great, but they care. He's out there doing all kinds of yard work. She's out there riding the zero turn. I mean, they care and I enjoy helping people that want to actually improve their lawn. If you don't give a damn about your lawn, well, I'm not going to help you. It really is. Anyone can, can turn a lawn. It doesn't matter what condition it's in. You can turn your lawn into a really healthy lawn and I'll go over some of the keys. But you follow the Bermuda Lawn Guide. It's free, we leave it up all the time. Use it, understand it, use the right product, put down a quality fertilizer. Don't run to Home Depot or Lowe's and just buy a bag of crap. Figure out what your lawn needs. That's why we invented some of the things like PGF Complete, which is a professional grade fertilizer um, and has the extra iron. PGF Balance, which is a good adjustment fertilizer if you have low phosphorus. PGF 1608, in case you have high phosphorus. All these things come into play. Human char, improve your soils. Dirt booster, <laughs> add organic matter. Use the chicken feed, whatever. You don't have to spend a huge amount of money on your lawn, you just have to follow some basic principles. Pre-emergent, get your pre-emergent down in the spring and then feed your lawn, and if you have a Bermuda lawn, you push it, push it, push it during the growing season. So hold on. <laughs> Sister went to the vet today, so she's all worked up. So how are we getting this super tight, short turf? Number one, we've got to cut it short. You got to understand that. Number two, during the growing season, we are pushing this lawn. I have been pumping down PGF Complete, 1648, um, and then 
For me, with low phosphorus, I've done a couple treatments of the PGF balance, which is the 10-10-10 fast release to bump up my phosphorus levels. Now, both of those have high iron, and that's also helping with this dark green color. So if you use either of those, you're gonna get some of this really dark, nice green color here. I haven't really used any spray iron to, to speak of on this lawn. I've just been using the PGF Complete and the PGF Balance. If you have high phosphorus, of course, you're going to use the 1608. I have been pounding down human char for close to two years now on this lawn. It has really helped. The carbon level is very, very high. Um, we have pretty much shut off our fertilizers for a while. You're probably going to see a dog go pee in the background or poo. Um, and then we've switched over to doing some organic matter. Now, we've talked about the organic treatments. Whether you use the chicken feed or whether you use the dirt booster, either one, it's helping out. Getting that really good organic, clean organic matter down into the grass really helps. It really is tough to sort of visualize. If you're not walking on this, it really is tough to explain just how amazing it's it's cut it exactly half an inch it's so tight i can't get my fingers through it um, i cannot get my fingers through this grass it's so tight and my son even said he said dude he said this is better than any golf course i have ever seen period it's just amazing morning so <laughs> as you can see behind me i actually put out my second light coat of growth regulator that's one of the options you have when you want to get this short, tight turf. But let's talk about my golden rule. Rule number one is learn when to push your lawn. The pushing season for warm season grasses, and especially Bermuda, is while your temperatures are in the 80s. For me, that typically comes May and June, sometimes late April, but really May and June are the pushing months. As long as I have either irrigation or I'm getting decent rain, I am pushing my lawn. I am putting down the right fertilizer, depending on which of the three you select, and I'm putting out a light coat every two or three weeks. Very light coat every two or three weeks, just below the bag rate, let's say. And what that'll do is it'll supply constant nutrients to the lawn without over pushing it. It just doesn't make sense to come out here and dump eight weeks supply of fertilizer on your lawn and then walk away. This little spoon feeding method where we slowly release it and slowly release it, especially because all the PGF fertilizers have iron in them. And so when we do this spoon feeding of every three weeks or so, we're constantly putting iron down on our lawn, which gives it that really dark green pop. Rule number two, that's really important. You can put down all the fertilizer you want and if you have a macronutrient, so an N, uh, a P or a K, let's say, it's usually phosphorus. If you have one of those that's way off, you need to adjust that. So a soil test, I don't care what time of the year it is, get a soil test on and understand, do I need to make an adjustment? Again, um, there really hasn't been a good way to put down make a phosphorus adjustment on a lawn that you don't risk hurting it. The new PGF balance, which we asked Andersons to create for our Jumpstart program, is a great way to bump up your phosphorus. It's all fast release. You don't want a slow release to make an adjustment. It's all fast release. It's a 10-10-10. It has iron and micros. It has done a tremendous job back here on our lawn. Number three, I think, is not letting your grass get out of control. If you want to have short, thick grass, you have got to cut it a lot. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's, that's pretty much your option. Now, I understand that a lot of you guys don't have real mowers. Jack Russell. <laughs> a lot of you guys don't have real mowers. A lot of you guys have rotary mowers, and it's a struggle to cut short because you get scalping marks and it's uneven. But I'm just going to tell you, just keep cutting it low during this growth time. Just cut it low, cut it low, cut it low. If you want to make a move over to a real mower, of course, I link on the page below. I'll link to the McLean's, which is my top pick because they're lightweight, they're easy to work on, and they're not $5,000 a piece. Once you let your Bermuda start to get up long, 
the only way to get it backed out is to scalp it basically again. You've got to go out, and I've done that many times. I've had my lawn get out of control, and I've just screw it. Go ahead and just scalp it down again and just sort of restart. You can do that. What's rule number four? Rule number four is once you have started that process of feeding the lawn and correcting your soil nutrients, focus on your soil. I'm telling you, we have been pumping down humichar here for a year and a half now, almost for about a year and a half, and the higher carbon levels in your lawn will do amazing things. We've seen this in our seeding programs where we used really high carbon percentages of how much water that stuff will hold. Carbon biochar will hold a lot of water, number one. Number two, it holds onto nutrients and it gives microbes a place to hide. That darker color soil is what we're trying to create and it takes a long time. Now it doesn't go away. That's the good thing about humichar. It's a long-term investment. So when you put that down, it's 50% humic and 50% biochar, but the biochar will stay there for hundreds of years. We're just trying to work up to a certain percentage in the soil, and it takes a long time to do that. The other thing that we want to do is, is once we move into the what I call what I call the danger or stress zones, where we get into maybe late June, July, and August, where we get those real high temps, maybe have some drought conditions. Before that, right about, and I'm doing it now is start some organic programs. So you can put down the chicken feed and spray with a micro pack. You can use the Dirt Booster, which is all in one. Now the Dirt Booster has organic matter, human char, and a micro pack, all in one. Uh, this year, it's only in 20 pound bags, so it may not be economical. It's good for smaller size lawns, but not large lawns. Um, but you do that organic. Pump down some clean organic matter and spray microbial pack and get the mycorrhizal fungi working for your, for your plants. Remember, mycorrhizal fungi, here's your plant roots. The mycorrhizal fungi will come up and connect with this and double, triple, quadruple the root coverage and the ability of that plant to pick up water and nutrients. That's the whole point to it. Good fungus is what we want good fungus and soil microbes, and we have to feed them and keep them alive. So it's kind of funny. This video clip that I actually shot on my phone this morning is a house that is about four doors down from me. And every year they let their little Bermuda lawn get to like four inches long. And it looks horrible. <laughs> it looks horrible. It's always full of disease. It's always full of grubs. You can't see what's going on with your turf and it just looks horrible. Trust me, nobody's stopping at their house saying, man, how do you get your grass like that? <laughs> and every week I have at least one person, one of my neighbors stop by and say, what are you using on your lawn? <laughs> so it's just all Bermuda, all Bermuda. Hybrid likes to be very short. Hybrid Bermuda likes to be between half an inch and one and a half inches. That's where it wants to be. Common Bermuda, maybe a little bit taller, but Bermuda grass, you, it needs to be cut short, period. You do not let Bermuda grass grow long. You do not let Bermuda grass grow into the three and four inches. And that's a real problem that I see. What's interesting is we have a lot of people from up north that are dealing with fescues and cool season lawns, and they come down here and they have Bermuda, and they think, oh, I gotta let my grass get up to three or four inches. So remember, Bermuda turf, cut it short, follow the five simple rules, hit subscribe, get the Bermuda lawn guide. That's about it. Give it a thumbs up, thumbs down. I don't care. Either one. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Doc.